Petey, do you want to review this movie with me? Do you want to review Knock at the Cabin? Come here. You want to give your thoughts? What are your thoughts? What did you think of Knock at the Cabin? Okay, I'll let him know. Okay. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. My name is Justin. Let's talk about a movie. I will ask for the last time. Will you make a choice? While vacationing, a girl and her parents are taken hostage by armed strangers who demand that the family make a choice to avert the apocalypse. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. If this is your first time here, uh, again, my name is Justin. On this channel, we do movie reviews, uh, trailer reactions, movie deep dives, all that good stuff. I do have a second channel. If you're into physical media and collecting, that's called The Dead Couch. You can check that out. I will link that down below. I also have a podcast with my Rad Pack crew, the Rad Pack podcast, where we talk about uh, movies, retro stuff stuff and things like that. I actually have a brand new podcast on this channel called Acquired Takes uh, with my co-host Jason. We actually did just drop, uh, not a podcast episode, but a full in-depth review of RRR. So if you've been hearing a little bit of buzz about that movie, it was nominated for an Oscar recently. We just dropped a review on that if you want to check that out. But that's not what you guys are here. I'm just cleaning house here, paying the bills. Let's talk about M. Night Shyamalan's latest movie, Knock at the cabin. So the big elephant in the room here is this film is written and directed along with some other co-writers uh, by M. Night Shyamalan. So for a lot of people when they hear that, that will either let them know that they just have to see it or they just have to avoid it. Uh, I'm in the camp that I like a lot of M. Night stuff. I love Split. Um, Signs is an amazing film. The Sixth Sense was ruined for me before I saw it. The big reveal was ruined. So I never bothered to watch that. I'm still upset about that to this day, all these years later. I was a big fan of old. As silly as it was, I liked a lot of the concepts and I actually dug uh, the twist of that movie. M. Night's film, The Visit, is a film I feel which is fairly underrated. I, I honestly think that's a really solid film and it was a return to form for M. Night making a really creepy uh, movie. I feel like that's kind of an underrated movie in his catalog and I enjoy that one as well. But now that we got all my M. Night Shyamalan history out of the way, let's talk about the newest film, Knock at the Cabin. Now right off the bat, I will say this movie really isn't a horror film. I know it's kind of marketed with a, a trailer that makes it seem like it's going to be some kind of, you know, potentially disturbing, violent horror film. At least that's the impression that I got. Um, this movie is more of a suspense thriller. It's a bottle movie, so it takes place all essentially in one room. I do enjoy those kind of movies. Those type of movies are really good for building tension, usually by dialogue, and that's the case with uh, Knock at the Cabin. Uh, the film starts out with a solid premise. The setup is awesome. Uh, the main protagonists in this movie are a couple, two dads and their adopted daughter. Uh, they're away at a cabin in the woods for a little weekend getaway when their weekend is interrupted uh, by a group of people who are demanding that they come in their house and very convincingly um, explain to them that if they don't choose this couple and their daughter, if they don't choose one of the three of them to sacrifice uh, themselves, that the world will come to a uh, an end, basically. It's the apocalypse. Dave Bautista and his crew, they bound their way into this home and say, hey guys, uh, sorry about all this. They're actually very polite. Their actions by forcing themselves into the house are obviously very threatening, but their words are very supportive. Like, they feel so bad that they have to do this. Dave Bautista and his crew are very threatening in the sense that they are demanding to get in the house, but you can see that it visibly pains them what they're doing. They very convincingly uh, explain the situation that if this couple and their daughter don't choose one of them to sacrifice themselves, that the world will come to an apocalyptic end. Uh, and it pains them. You can see the look on their faces. They don't want to be doing what they're doing, but they feel compelled to be doing it by a higher power. They've all seen visions and they demand a sacrifice or the world will end. While the initial setup of this movie is interesting, it quickly starts to lose steam, at least it did for me, in this slog of a middle section where it sort of just repeats itself over and over again. Every time that this couple and their daughter deny a request, they have to uh, perform a sacrifice themselves, and that happens multiple times. So this thing just keeps repeating itself in the center of the film, and you really just want to know the reveal. Is this apocalypse real? That's really what you're waiting for, this entire film. Is the is this apocalypse real or is this some shared delusion by Dave Bautista and this group of people who have shown up uninvited at this cabin? And that's where most of the frustration I have with this film comes from is the fact that halfway through the film, you really don't care about what's going on. You just want to know. You're just itching to know 
Is the apocalypse real or are these guys just delusional like 4chan QAnon weirdos? And when that finally is revealed, when you do find out what's happening, it's too little, too late, and the movie just sort of, for me, ended with a thud, with a very obvious ending. Now being that this is a spoiler free review, I'm not going to reveal obviously the twist at the end, but I will say this movie doesn't have this massive like earth shattering twist that Shyamalan is, has been known for. The ending of this is pretty subdued and just kind of uh, it didn't really do it for me it's kind of hard to talk about it without doing spoilers um, but this movie has a real weak ending if this was a single hour-long episode of an anthology TV series like an updated Twilight Zone or something like that maybe this could have worked but stretched to an hour and 40 minutes it really just dragged for me and it just didn't work the movie explores these concepts fairly new concepts of groupthink and crazy people finding other crazy people on the internet um, that's kind of what this movie is exploring and commenting on. Are these people crazy or is this uh, the apocalypse? They give you just enough crumbs that this could be real, but also there's a huge possibility that these people could just be batshit crazy and are just home invaders. Um, and that's what you're kind of waiting, you're waiting for that reveal. That's what keeps you watching. That's basically the only sort of suspense. The film tries very hard to get you emotionally attached to these characters. And they even go back to some backstories and some flashbacks to develop these characters a little bit. But on the surface, I still didn't find myself caring. The, the interactions between these characters is just not that compelling. When it comes to the performances though, they're all great across the board. Dave Bautista gives a surprisingly heartfelt, emotional performance as he was convincing in this role. I love seeing him do something different, kind of stretch his acting legs. Uh, Rupert Grint from Harry Potter actually has uh, a good supporting role in this and he really shines as well. Uh, all the other supporting characters are really good, especially the little girl, the child actor in this movie is very convincing as well and you felt for her. But uh, outside of the performances though, and a fantastic score, M. Night does usually bring a good score, good music to the movie. His direction is fine, great camera movement, the cinematography is good. But outside of that, all of the emotions felt very shallow. I never felt really emotionally attached to anything going on. The movie tries very hard to present these heavy concepts and bring a lot of heavy emotion, but to me it felt very surface level and sort of obvious in every way, especially with the ending. Just felt shallow. Overall, I was pretty disappointed with this. It's it's not a bad movie. If you are a big fan of M. Night and you just have to go out and see it in the theater, sure, go ahead and see it. This is sitting at about two and a half stars for me. Um, if it was, uh, my recommendation would be to wait till it comes to streaming and just check it out there when it comes to some sort of streaming service. A trip to the theater, uh, although I hate to say it, I love supporting theaters. <laughs> Uh, a trip to the theater for this one really won't be necessary. Felt more like an episode of a TV series to me, but that's pretty much all I can say. I wish I could say more, but I don't feel very inspired to talk about this movie anymore. Uh, it was a little bit of a letdown. But guys, if you have seen it, let me know in your thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, and I think we're done here. Stay weird. Remember to always be yourself, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. クリネックスティッシュです。